Good morning and welcome to another edition of 100 Days of Devotion. This morning, before we get into the Word, pray with me for a minute. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful day that you've given to us. Lord, I'm so grateful for the privilege that it is mine to see this new day. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for health and for the breath of life that is upon us. Lord, I'm so grateful. Dear Father, your word says that this is the day that you have made and therefore we will rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, I pray that today we receive and walk in new expressions of joy. Thank you that the joy of the Lord fills our hearts. Thank you, Lord, because today the word of God will transform our lives and renew our minds. Our lives will never be the same again. Dear Father, I'm so grateful for the privilege that you've given me to share your word with your children this morning. I pray that you will grant me utterance, that I will speak forth your word with clarity. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. This morning, I'd like us to speak about the spirit of prophecy. Now, on this series of 100 Days of Devotion, we have a teaching entitled Prophecy to Manifestation and I'll recommend that you watch that video. It is a teaching about what happens between the release of a prophetic word and the time of its manifestation. In that teaching, we actually defined what prophecy is. We said that prophecy means to foretell. That means to speak of something designed to happen. It also means to foretell, meaning speak of something into being speak of something that will happen or i describe that as to forge as you tell now all for the purpose of edification exhortation and comfort to the one hearing or sometimes even to the one speaking especially in the case of forth telling now the beautiful thing about a prophetic word is that it actually gives us access light and direction to the future it points us towards things to come, God's will. Turn your Bibles very quickly with me to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 14. I'll read from verse 1 to 3 from the Amplified Translation. The Bible says in verse 1, Pursue this love with eagerness, make it your goal, yet earnestly desire and cultivate the spiritual gifts to be used by believers for the benefit of the church but especially that you may prophesy to foretell the future, to speak a new message from God to the people. Verse 2, For one who speaks in an unknown tongue does not speak to people but to God, for no one understands him or catches his meaning, but by the Spirit he speaks mysteries, secret truths, hidden things. Verse 3, But on the other hand, the one who prophesies speaks to people for edification, to promote their spiritual growth, and speaks words of encouragement to uphold and advise them concerning the matters of God, and speaks words of consolation to compassionately comfort them. Now that is so powerful. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 3 actually tells us the purpose of prophecy or what happens in prophecy. He says the one who prophesies speaks to people for edification to promote their spiritual growth. So prophecy will edify you. It will promote your spiritual growth. He says he speaks words of encouragement to uphold and advise them concerning the matters of God. Prophecy will uphold you, will encourage you, will exalt you. And finally he says speaks words of consolation to compassionately comfort them prophecy will bring comfort to your heart because prophecy is the revelation of jesus through the holy spirit now to prophesy also means to interpret the divine will and purpose of god in inspired preaching and teaching it is a vocal expression of the mind of god with the purpose of edifying of exalting and comforting by foretelling or forth telling and like i always say forging as you tell turn your bibles very quickly with me to the book of revelation i'm going to read chapter 19 from verse 9 to 10 the bible says 
Then the angel said to me, Write, Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding feast of the Lamb. And he said to me, These are the true words of God. Then I fell at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, Do not do that. I am a fellow servant of yours and your brothers and sisters who hold the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. I love that. The Bible says the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. This phrase appears in Revelation during a vision in which John sees the overthrow of evil and the triumph of the coming Christ. You know, oftentimes we see this phrase being used to help explain and justify prophetic utterance. But what does it really mean? How was it used in that context? Now, when you study the particular context in which this statement was made in Revelation chapter 19 verse 10, John is recording an extended vision of the last days that the Holy Spirit is giving to him. The angel or voice that speaks to John is speaking to John during the course of the vision. So John is having the vision at the same time the angel of the Lord is speaking to him. And the angel's message reminds John that the point of revelation is the testimony of Jesus Christ, not the worship of angels or spiritual experiences. So the angel is actually saying the reason for this vision, the reason for this revelation is to testify or to speak of the Lord Jesus Christ, not for the worship of angels. Remember, John was about to worship him. In fact, the Bible says John fell at his feet to worship him. But the angel said to him, do not do that. I am a fellow servant of yours and your brothers and sisters who hold the testimony of Jesus. Then the angel said to him, worship God. Don't worship angels, worship God. You know, sometimes people crave certain supernatural experiences and encounters so much that they begin to be a kind of idol worship. It begins to be a kind of distraction. You will find people who leave the word of God, who are not given to the word of God. They are yearning so much for supernatural experiences that these things become a kind of idol worship. And we must be very careful that these supernatural experiences and occurrences, which by the way are necessary and godly, do not become the thing that we worship. That we do not uphold the supernatural experiences more than we uphold the one who brings us into each experience. In other words, the angel was saying the purpose of all prophecy is to reveal the kingdom of God and the work of Jesus Christ. That's what we call the spirit of prophecy. That which reveals the kingdom of God and the work of Jesus Christ. The prophetic utterance, the divinely inspired utterance that reveals the kingdom of God and the work of Jesus Christ. The point of a testimony is to reveal Jesus Christ in our experience. So in like manner, prophecy is to bring to light or make known the will of God in our experience. The Bible says do not despise prophecies. Don't despise prophecies because they make known the will of God. You know, sometimes in your Christian journey, as you're thinking about God and praying about different circumstances, God will give us access supernaturally to different prophetic experiences that will make known his will to us. They will make known his will to us. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 20 and 21, the Bible says, Above all, you must understand that no prophecy of scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation of things. For prophecy never had its origins in the human will. But prophets, though human, spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. In other words, the Holy Spirit inspired them to speak. Prophecy is God-inspired utterance or speech. Prophecy means that God is speaking through you. And the way we know that God is speaking is that it will be consistent with the person, the purpose and the plan of Jesus Christ. If you give a word that is not consistent with the person, the message, the purpose and the plan of Jesus Christ, then we must judge that prophecy to be wrong. No wonder the Bible says, test all prophecies. 
how do we test you see the standard is jesus christ because the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of jesus this is why it is said that the testimony of jesus is the spirit of prophecy in other words the point of all prophecy past present and future is to make the heart of jesus christ known in and through our experiences prophecy is a vocal expression of the mind of god it is a supernatural work it is a sign and a wonder both to unbelievers and to believers now to the unbeliever the prophetic expressions of the word of knowledge which is the revelation of things past and present so for example you go for a meeting and a prophet calls you or somebody calls you and says this is your name and you agree and the person says so and so thing happened to you in your past or it's currently happening to you that is called the word of knowledge now it is a kind of prophetic expression okay now this is usually a wonder that gets the attention and stirs up the faith of unbelievers to believe in that which will be said of the future you see it seems to be most powerful and effective for evangelism so when we are talking to unbelievers and even sometimes to believers and i'm not saying this is only for unbelievers but usually when we are talking to people who don't believe the prophetic expression that they will adhere to or believe in the most will be the word of knowledge because it speaks of things that have already happened usually things that nobody else knows but them you will find somebody say this is what you've been experiencing in this season in fact you had this kind of dream yesterday last night on your way to work so and so thing happened a woman called you and said this to you all of that expression that reveals the past or the present is called the word of knowledge and it is usually a deep wonder to unbelievers to stir up their faith so that they can believe that which will be said about the future however for the believer while we may be intrigued by all expressions of the prophetic as a vocal expression of the mind of god we may be intrigued by the word of wisdom the word of knowledge foretelling all of that but you see that which is most powerful and effective for the believer is when we speak forth the word of god over our present and our future i describe this as forging as you tell or forth telling for the believer forth telling is most effective the spirit of prophecy upon the believer will cause you to speak forth the will of god into your present and future so you don't need to wait for a prophet you can take the word of god and you can speak it forth over your present and the future don't despise the power of forging your future the bible tells us that we can speak forth things no wonder the Bible says that you will decree a thing and it will be established unto you. You can speak forth and it will come to pass. Don't despise the power of prophecy. You see, this is why the Bible will tell us to earnestly desire the spiritual gifts, especially that we may prophesy because of the capacity of prophecy to reveal and ascertain the existence of God and to make the heart of Jesus Christ known to us. The spirit of prophecy is the testimony or revelation of Jesus. The ability to prophesy means that we can both hear from God and are in a position where God can speak through us. So in other words, God speaks to us and through us. That is the ability to prophesy. It means that we are given to the practice of aligning our hearts and minds to God in anticipation of His voice. You cannot prophesy if you don't expect to hear the Lord's voice. In deep expectation and believing that we have been given access. If you don't believe that you have been given access to God's voice, you cannot hear the Lord. In deep pondering on the Word of God that causes us to roar. In deep meditation. When you're given to meditation, you would hear from God. God will speak to you and through you. People who are activated to prophesy are given to setting a quiet time to have conversation and exchange with God. You must learn to have a quiet time where God speaks to you and He can speak through you. You must be given to adoration to God. 
either in song or in words, you must learn to bring your adoration to God. You have to learn the practice of deep reverential adoration to God. In that place of adoration, you will hear God's voice. He will speak to you and through you. You cannot be effective at prophecy and exchange with God if you're not given to prayer. I've taught on prayer. I've told you that prayer is the exchange of deep and intimate thoughts, feelings and words with God. People who are activated to prophesy are given to deep study of the word of God. They know the word of God because remember prophecy reveals Jesus. These people are given to meditation, creating vivid mental pictures of the word of God in our minds. These people are given to listening and writing that which is received of God. You've got to listen to him and write it down because God will speak to you and through you. Now, all prophecy will always be consistent with the person, the purpose and plan of Jesus Christ. You know, in the school of prophecy, we teach about different languages by which God might speak to us. I prefer to say that God speaks to us all alike, but we interpret in different ways or styles which we can describe as prophetic personalities. Now, prophetic personalities will differ from the mode of revelation. When we're talking about the mode of revelation, we are speaking about how the prophetic message is received, whether it is a vision, whether it is a revelation or a still small voice, whether it is an impression or an audible voice or a vivid image or vision. These are all modes of revelations. However, the prophetic personality describes how people are wired to receive the message and interpret it. And again, this is important because God's desire for us is that we all operate in prophetic accuracy and carry the spirit of prophecy. Now, I will speak about five prophetic personalities. But however, this may not be all that exists. You know, again, these are different from the mode of revelation. But they are the way that we will tend to interpret and move with the prophetic signal or message. There are five kinds of prophetic personalities. The first kind is you have people who are the expressives. The expressives are people who recognize God in obvious expressions. You know, they believe in signs and things that point to God. They would tend to get a message from God in almost anything, in a line from a movie, in a conversation with a friend, from a billboard, from a t-shirt, from an inscription, from their watch, and so on and so forth. And all of these signs will align with scripture and will point to the person and purpose of Jesus. There are some people who are quite expressive. When their clock shows 11, 11, there's something that God will show them from that. And it will be incredible. Sometimes other people say it's a coincidence, but they're able to see the Lord in different expressions. The second kind of prophetic personality, we have the contemplative. Now the contemplative, these are people who have a dynamic that looks for patterns. They look for a number of signs that work together. They usually take some time to brood over what God has said or is saying and do a kind of due diligence. They look for patterns and the thread about what God is saying in order to understand God's voice in a given season. So it's not a lack of faith, but a strong ability to bring scripture and signs together to interpret God's voice. Again, this must be consistent with the word of God and must align with the person and purpose of Jesus. So they will bring different things together. They will take time. They would say in Revelation, the Bible said this and in Malachi, the Lord said this and in these recent times, the Lord has shown this and this. So they will bring different signs with scripture and contemplate or brood over these things to come up with what God is saying. The third kind of prophetic personality is the strategic now, the strategic people are people who are always looking for how the micro or now word of God fits with the macro word of God or the larger picture or plan of God. So they will always look to see how what God is saying in the now fits into the big picture. So when they hear a word from God, they will always seek to connect the dots and look for the bigger picture. Where is God leading us to? They have a big ability to interpret the times and the seasons and project forward. This is what the Lord is saying now, but this is what we believe God is saying about the future. These people will have a strong word of wisdom. 
again it is quite important for the study of end times what we call eschatology and even quite vital in interpreting god's plan for nations in in politics all right now the fourth kind of people we have the mysticals the mysticals are people who usually are misunderstood in the church because they have such a deep internal dialogue with god they are usually deep and consistently experience the supernatural realm they could be speaking to you at the same time listening to god they are drawn into mystical or should i say mysterious experiences that are quite vivid and clear but must be interpreted in line with the word of god so these are usually weird people they see deep pictures and images and god will always speak to them through that kind of depth okay so these people are usually weird and they have deep insight and awareness of the presence of god and as a result of deep mystical encounters with god that are quite fascinating i know a lot of mystical people and lastly number five we have the adventurers these are people who delve into a realm of god's voice and the prophetic as an adventure so what happens is god will usually give the adventure a clue but they will have to journey with those clues in intimate fellowship before they can form the full prophetic word it is like following a roadmap so they will usually receive one word from god or just have one sign or one word repeating in their minds from god but they have to now come to god in intimate fellowship and pursue the lord in prayer until the picture gets clearer now as you grow in the lord god will want you to operate in all of these personalities these prophetic personalities and so in different seasons the prophetic personality may change so no matter which prophetic personality you are remember again i said these are different from the modes of revelation all right how the message comes whether it is a, a voice or a vision or just a knowing an impression and all of that those are all modes of revelation but this is how you would tend to interpret that mode of revelation or the message that is received no matter in what prophetic personality you are god expects your foundation to be the word and that the spirit of prophecy upon your life will be to testify about jesus for the purpose of causing the will of god to be established in the earth as it is in heaven jesus is prophecy confirmed jesus is and must remain the purpose the summary the big picture and the fulfillment of every prophecy i pray for you in the name of jesus that you'll be drawn to a realm where you prophesy where god can speak forth his word to you and through you for the purpose of edification of exaltation and of comfort that his will will be established on earth i pray that your spirit will be attuned to receive prophetic messages from god and if you have never heard the voice of god i pray that today as you give yourself to listening in quiet time you will hear the vivid word of god about your particular circumstance i release an activation of the prophetic upon you in jesus mighty name i pray amen again if you're not following this page or subscribed to this channel i strongly recommend that you press that subscribe button right now and remember to share this with someone and their lives will be blessed it was great having you on today's meditation i can't wait to see you tomorrow god bless you goodbye